Before we talk about limits in multivariable calculus, let's just take uh, a brief step back into single variable calculus. Recall that a limit as x approaches a of some function f of x is equal to some number l if we have the limit as we approach from the left equaling that number l and we have the limit as x approaches that variable a from the right also equaling l. In other words, the left and the right limits have to exist and they have to agree. However, uh, f evaluated at a may or may not equal l or f of evaluated at a may not even exist. And I've got a couple of graphs here that illustrate that. We've got x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. We've got x times sine 1 over x. We've got the absolute value of x over x. And then we've got uh, 5x squared. So let's just evaluate uh, the limits for um, x times sine 1 over x, absolute value x over x, and uh, 5x squared as x goes to 0. And we'll do this one as x goes to uh, 2. So the first one, we have to pull out a little factoring. This is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2 x minus 2 over x minus 2. Of course, the x minus 2's cancel. And this is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 of just x plus 2, which is, of course, 4. So we know that exists. However, note that if we evaluate at 2, right, this function f of 2 uh, does not exist because you have 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2, which is 0 over 0. right? So keep that in mind. The limit exists, but the function evaluated does not. Now, for the second problem, what we're going to do is use the squeeze theorem. And the squeeze theorem basically says that uh, we know sine of any argument is going to be restricted to some number that's between negative 1 and positive 1. So that means that the smallest sign of any argument can be is negative 1. So this is going to be strictly greater than limit as x approaches 0 of negative x. And the largest sign of any argument can be is going to be positive 1. So this is uh, limit x goes to 0 of positive x. I'm writing the plus just to make it explicit. Um, obviously, this limit goes to 0. And that's less than or equal to this unknown limit. And this also goes to 0. So the only number that is simultaneously uh, less than or equal to 0 and greater than or equal to 0 is itself 0. And we know that the limit of uh, this function, x times sine 1 over x, is equal to 0. Let's see. For the absolute value function, note that for x greater than 0, this is just uh, the limit as x goes to 0 of x over x, which is just positive 1. But for x less than 0, this is uh, the limit as x goes to 0 of x over negative 1. I'm sorry, x over negative x. And this is, of course, negative 1. So the left and the right limits do not agree. And of course, uh, f of 0 itself does not exist, hopefully for obvious reasons, because it's 0 over 0. Lastly, we come to this happy polynomial. Uh, very easy to evaluate. Uh, there's no discontinuities. There's no uh, weird um, piecewise functions happening. We can just evaluate this function. It's 5 times 0 squared, and it's just 0. So the limit exists, and it's equal to f of 0, which is also 0. So everything works out nicely for the polynomials. Okay. The key here, and we'll go back to this picture, is that in single variable calculus, we can approach from the left, and we can approach from the right. And that's, that's all we can really do, because we're limited to the x-axis only. We can approach from the left, we can approach from the right. In the next video, I'm going to show you what happens when we have some um, problems where 
we're now working with three-dimensional functions and we can approach from any path we like along the XY plane. Uh, so stay tuned.